Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. It's a delight to be with you, and thanks for joining us. If you are listening to this broadcast in the daylight hours, I'm probably already in my car driving from central Illinois over to the general Lancaster, Pennsylvania area. I get to be with a local church at celebrating 50 years of God's faithfulness in the ministry there. I have fallen in love with this church. I've been there a few times before. They love the Word of God. I like preaching there because the people, well, they have ears that are ready to hear the Word of God. They love to implement what they learn. Local churches like that are just a delight to be in. This local church happens to support the ministry and helps us take the gospel all over the world. And so it's kind of a double dose of blessing for me. Now, right now, for you to get the greatest blessing out of our time, reach over and get your Bible and open to 1 John chapter 1, would you please? 1 John 1, these verses 5 through 10 have been our focus all this week and will continue uh, spilling over into next week as well. I've got a gospel tract here I want to give you. I want to urge you to get from us. I really want to give you a free sample packet of tracts. I'm going to say more about that, but I want to lead into our study time a little differently. And it goes like this. One of the hardest assignments any local church leader will ever have to do is to implement church discipline on one of its members. Now, Church discipline, it's biblical, but there have been times when it's been carried out with unbiblical attitudes by leaders and by the local church itself. But frankly, the big issue for the modern day church is not the attitude of the leaders or people, it's the lack of doing discipline at all when it's needed. Now, so many believers do not want their church to do church discipline. They feel it's unloving. But what these, frankly, very sincere folk uh, are forgetting is that our fellowship at our church, our fellowship with one another, is not founded on God's love, but on his holiness. Oh, to be sure, love is called for over and over between the saints in the New Testament. But our passage today says this. If we, believers, walk in the light, as God is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. When a church member persists in not walking in light but in darkness, then the fellowship of the saints is being damaged. Come back with me with your Bible open to 1 John chapter 1. This week we've been doing a look at one of the most critical passages for a child of God. It deals with our daily walk. It was important not just to the first century church when John penned it, it's important to the 21st century church. Join me in 1 John chapter 1. I mentioned the gospel tracts here a moment ago. I've got one in my hand. And just to be clear, a gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The one in my hand right now is entitled, You Can Know, followed by an exclamation point. You can know. And the subtitle says this, you can know real answers to eternal issues. Let me tell you some of the questions that are asked here. Here's the first one. Is there a hereafter? It's answered with a Bible verse. Another question, is there a heaven? Answered by the Bible verse. Is there a hell? Answered by a Bible verse. Where do the saved go at death? Answered by a Bible verse. Where do the lost go when they die? Answered with a Bible verse. But then it gets to this critical question. Where will I go when I die? And at that point, we lead right into a gospel presentation. This is one of my three favorite tracks. You can know. I use it all the time. Would you let me please send it to you? 
at the end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to give our contact information, jot down the method that works best for you, and give us your name and mailing address. We'll send you a free sample packet containing this and over 40 tracks in it. They're all free. Please, please, let you and I become partners in doing gospel work. You can also order the sample packet at our website. A web address is Bible Tracks Inc. Dot O-R-G. The word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. With your Bible open, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 begins this way. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We're going to stop reading at that point there. Now, this week, verses 5 through 10, as I said, have been our focus. And as a follower of God, many today in their relationship, in their day-to-day relationship, sometimes struggle with that because they don't know upon what their relationship with God is based. That's what this passage deals with. Our relationship with God is built upon one foundational truth. Here it is in verse 5. God is holy. Now, verse 5 does not use the word holy, but that is exactly what it's talking about. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 12, he said, I am the light of the world. Now, that is the part of the verse we normally remember. We typically use that statement as a gospel presentation statement, and that's fine. We tell people that they are sinners and they are in spiritual darkness. This condition will lead them to end up in hell, a place that Jesus described as outer darkness. And then we tell people that they can escape their fate in hell. They can escape their condemnation of sin because Jesus came to be the light. He came to offer them the only way out of darkness. And that's why sinners need Jesus as Savior. Now, friend, that's great. That's good. But after, and I mean immediately after Jesus said that he was the light of the world in the very same breath, Jesus said these words, and I'm quoting, He that followeth me, Jesus, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, Jesus said that by receiving him as Savior, as our light out of darkness, that would mean that your life and my life is going to be altered. Rather than walking or living in darkness anymore, we would live in a life characterized by light. And, of course, the words light and darkness refer to a moral and ethical status. They refer to a life patterns of practicing either godliness or sinfulness. Here in 1 John 1 and verse 5, God is not called the light. He is called simply light. It's a description of his moral character. And when it comes to sin, God doesn't have any. He never had any, and he never can have any. God is utter holiness. Then verse 5 states this fact from the opposite side when it says, In him and God is no darkness at all. Now, that's pretty straightforward and blunt. And it's a statement that's true of only God, but a state true of God. Now, I mentioned John 8 a moment ago. That's where Jesus said that he's the light of the world. But in the same chapter, Jesus was later on challenged about his claims to be older than Abraham. Jesus said to the Pharisees before Abraham was, I am. And the Pharisees understood what Jesus was saying. Jesus was claiming to be God there right in front of them there in John chapter 8. So, What does Jesus do? Well, in verse 46, Jesus asks this question, which of you convinces me of sin? What's he doing? He's claiming sinlessness. When Jesus died on the cross, it was the just person dying in the place for unjust people. To be just means that Jesus was in a right relationship to holiness. 
Jesus had no sin and could not sin. Why? He was the holy, eternal God living in flesh, dwelling among men. He was able to live in the flesh, dwell among men, and yet be totally untainted by sin because in him is no darkness at all. Now, to follow Jesus, and by the way, when a person is genuinely saved from their sins, that means that they are now a follower of Jesus. Being a follower is not a hyped up status of being a saved person. It means you are a saved person. If you're saved, you're a follower of Jesus. But to follow him means that we live or we have our daily life pattern in light. We're living a life pattern of moral uprightness. That's what it means to be walking in the light. You see, the idea of God being holy is far more than just some doctrinal truth we learn in theology class someplace. The fact that God is holy is the basis of being in fellowship with God and with one another. Verses 6 through 10, we have three false statements that are made here. And evidently, John heard these in his generation. I know I have heard them in our present generation. And the three false statements are these. The first one in verse 6 says, If we say, if I say that I'm a follower of Jesus and I'm in fellowship with him, but my life pattern is one of unholy living, then I'm a liar. The second false statement is found in verse 8. If I say, well, I don't have any sin, and there's no speck of darkness in me anymore, then I am deceived. The third false statement is verse 10. If I say, concerning the action that I just did, well, it's not sinful. It was okay for me to do it, even though God has, in his word, labeled it as sin, then I'm a liar. We're going to begin to examine these three claims beginning on tomorrow's broadcast. Here, though, here's the takeaway truth for us today. Learn it, know it, make it part of the foundation of your walk with Jesus. Here it is. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you and I are called to live a holy life. I'm called to live my day-to-day life in fellowship with a holy, perfect Savior. To do that will mean I will need to consistently, did you hear the word consistently, measure myself by Jesus's holiness, not by somebody else's holiness, not by my pastor, not by my wife or husband, not by my godly grandparent, but by Jesus alone. Now tell me, friend, Are you, am I, are we allowing some pet sin to remain in our lives? If we are, we are not in the fellowship relationship for which we were saved. We're out of fellowship with God. And if I'm out of fellowship with God, I'm out of fellowship with fellow believers. That's why, by the way, some church members, they like to link together and they form their own little clique because they're all out of fellowship. And those who are in fellowship and striving to walk in fellowship with God and with one another, they kind of hang together because spiritual birds of the same feather, they flock together. So friend, who do you flock with at your church? Those walking in fellowship with God or those walking not in fellowship? There's a question for the day. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.